Okay. Good morning, everyone, and I am Nick Slotron, founder of CyberNet. And today, I will show a presentation to you is the 5G antenna packaging PCB electronic thermal coupling analysis. And talking about 5G, I think this is most the hottest and uh, many people will discuss with the 5G topic in uh, many seminars. So, um, Today, I will show you why the 5G will become the hottest topic in the communication area. The 5G is not only a, a generation for the communication. It is the biggest frequency band change from the communication. We finally can use in the millimeter wave in the communication, but we will make some issue in this frequency change because the middle wave is a short electro lens in the simulation and the measurement. So uh, to uh, face this issue, we will do some, do more simulation and consider more physical phenomena to uh, solve in the maybe multi-phases problem in the thermal coupling or the, the SIPI and this most uh, physical phenomenon we were never thinking in the 4G and the third generation of communication. Okay, let's just, just go to start with today's presentation. And this is agenda today. First, I will introduce you for uh, 5G and the first topic is why is 5G? Okay. The second is the sub six and the millimeter wave. Those two band will be a uh, main uh, frequency band in the 5G communication. So I will spend many time to explain why we are choosing the sub six and why we are choosing the millimeter wave. And I will talking about the uh, y axis. Okay, this is most important thing that I think the there are many people will uh, find some uh, CA2 or to slot in the 5G issue. And there are many CA2 in uh, for you to reference. And the answer is we're providing the golden multi-phases solution for the 5G. So there are uh, Many things we are introducing to you, and uh, I will is, I will show you the all ANSYS product in the five G application. After that, we will go to a five G RF simulation. The RF may include in the antenna design and the array accessories and package. Uh, most special thing is the installed performance for antenna. This physical. Phenomenon is we never to uh, looking for in the 4G and the certain relation of communication. And, but in the 5G, this is most important thing. If we finish our uh, device, we will show the uh, environment effect in the, our device. So this will be a uh, main phenomenon uh, to uh, consider in the design. And I will show you the 5G in PCB and multi uh, The PCB simulation will be more and more important in the 5G application. And this is because of the many devices are put on in the PCB. And it meant the PCB have to consider in the power integrity and the signal integrity uh, to uh, and correct Asian for the PCB. So if we improve in the many IC and many RF circuit to uh, the PCB, we will uh, make some uh, error Asian for the PCB if we don't consider about the SIMPI. So I will show some CA2 or SI wave and uh, HRS 3D layout to uh, do simulation with the PCB. And you can analyze the 
pre-designed and the uh, analysis uh, uh, signal integrity and uh, power integrity and even the uh, ESD, EMC, EMI. Uh, and I will introduce the new product of ANSYS and the EMS3D to uh, build the cable modeling and uh, they will co-simulation with HFS and uh, SI wave. So this is the second important point in today. And the final session will be the thermal simulation. Uh, the thermal problem will be uh, uh, many people will research and uh, to uh, figure out the way to uh, solve the thermal problem in the 5G device because of uh, the antenna will be active antenna and there will be power, many power amplifier and phase shifter in the antenna. Uh, so we need to uh, slab in the, uh, this uh, power circuit to uh, bring in the thermal problem for the, our device. And maybe the, the device purpose will drop down in the uh, user was using this device. So we should uh, analyze this is a thermal issue in the device and we will solve in the issue or maybe put in the uh, heat sink or get some fan and to uh, solve in the thermal problem. Okay, let's go to uh, introduction. People are introduction and uh, I think uh, I will uh, introducing ourselves. Uh, as far as you know, we are Cybernet Systems and we are the biggest group company in uh, Asia for who's providing the CAE tool. And uh, we have uh, uh, providing uh, many uh, solution uh, of the CAE and uh, ARVR, uh, data and IoT an IT solution. Most important thing is our engineering service. We have mechanical and engineer and uh, safety engineer and even the uh, electrical engineer uh, to uh, solve in the uh, issue with our customers. And uh, we have uh, worked with you and we will provide in the best service uh, to you and help you to solve your issue. And this is our map of our company, and we have a main office in Japan. And in Asia, we always uh, have the other office with uh, China and Malaysia and, Ta and Taiwan. Okay. Uh, first, uh, I was talking about the 5G uh, band changing of the generation in every communication. Uh, Maybe you just thinking about uh, what is the first generation in uh, communication. Oh, you just a uh, mobile phone in the communication, and we just and translation the voice, and we can talking each other uh, by the first generation. The second generation will join the test. We can test somebody and with our cell phone, and we not only just made phone call with the cell phone. We can test somebody and maybe I think this is the interesting thing in the sec second generation. The third generation will be joining the internet. Uh, I always remember when I was a kid and I'm very happy to uh, have a cell phone with the internet. So. This is the third generation will bring us uh, change our life, and we will uh, have some uh, thing start with the internet. The internet will be uh, popular in the people, and I think this is the important generation for the communication. In fourth generations, uh, they just not only including the internet and including the multimedia uh, to uh, to do that. So we have to uh, the our frequency band to uh, cover more frequency band to uh, transmission the 
biggest data array of the communication generation. And in fourth generation, there will be uh, two uh, main fixed band to uh, in uh, this generation. It just uh, called uh, LTE and uh, the fine mass. The LTE is the final choice in the fourth generation. So our device will be uh, designed and developed with the LTE communication. But in 5G, the frequency band change is not just like the third generation to fourth generations. Uh, they were including many things in the 5G, maybe smart environment, IoT, self-driving cars. And to do that, we may transmit more and more data array to uh, our communication device. So we will uh, change our frequency band to the millimeter wave. The millimeter wave is the military use in uh, many years, but they are never in commercial use. Uh, the, the first, uh, and I have saw the commercial use uh, is ADAS systems. There was uh, 77 gigahertz uh, array for the radar. And after that, we can solve some uh, way to uh, using the meter wave in our communication device. But not just like the military use, we have a thinking of the cost of our uh, communication device. And so the 5G have uh, one important uh, mission is the to reduce our cost when we design the, our device. Um, but now the middle wave will transmission the uh, microwave with the short electron lens. So they will disappear when we are transmission in long distance. And to do that, we have to uh, some other uh, communication to help the middle wave. So this code, the sub 6G, the sub 6 will including the LTE working band and uh, will join some band to uh, development the uh, LTE band. So that's the sub 6 has same performance with mid wave. But new in wave will be the important change for the 5G. So those two uh, frequency band is the, our main application of the 5G. Let's get some uh, 5G spectrum in the top five company, but uh, top top five country. The USA were using the all meter wave working band in the 5G device. The Europe will be uh, classified with the sub six and the meter wave. In China, the main usage is the sub six. The Japan is same and the Korea is same. So the sub six will be uh, used for uh, many companies at first because the device will be uh, ready on the YMS. In YMS band is the sub six main band. So uh, we will be uh, made uh, our uh, Many industry will be uh, working with the sub six, but you, if you want to uh, design a sub six device, we may be uh, going to a uh, meter wave. This because of the sub six only transmission the long distance. The in the coverage of the uh, indoor communication will be in the meter wave. So this is the most important thing in the 5G communication. You have designed those frequency band in a device. To do that, maybe you will not be uh, using the traditional measure to design our device because uh, 
I think in there's there are many people who are working in the antenna industry, and they always are uh, using the uh, couple tape uh, to uh, do their antenna, and uh, the there are uh, many uh, high cost issue in the measurement. So in 5G device, maybe we were thinking about a simulation measure to uh, slot in the, those issue. Okay, not just only do the measurement for our device, and we need to uh, simulation at first, but the simulation will not replace the measurement. Okay, the simulation will help the me measurement more efficient. And uh, I think it is, it is a, a pair of way to uh, design the 5G device. So we have to recognize the in simulation is important thing of our uh, 5G, simula 5G device design. Uh, we will show you the 5G application. The 5G application will be hand on with the enhancement uh, mobile broadband and the broadband is the basic uh, requirement of the 5G that we're including the LTE and uh, we're including the Wi-Fi 6 and including the meter wave working band. So we have to uh, use in the, our CA2 to simulation and make sure our device has the wide band uh, to for the mobile use. And this is the first thing. And the second thing is the mass IoT. As far as you know, in mass IoT, we will be uh, working with the M2N device and uh, using the MIMO or even the messy MIMO to do the mass IoT. And the channel band and will be channel characteristic is more important than the our working band. So uh, we will do some uh, thing in the mass LT design. So follow our tour, we will show uh, something in the mass LT. The final thing is low latency. This is uh, most important uh, design considering with the high readability and the low latency design. The high readability will be a main issue in the 2020 because there are many 5G devices will be uh, make some issue with the low reliability, and the customer will be argue with you on uh, your device is not good reliability to for use. This is the worst thing of the communication device. So in 5G, you have to come consider many uh, domain with our design. To do that, again, you should use in the CA2 to uh, do this thing, not just only considering the measurement the measure. So let's go to a uh, simulation ratio. Yeah, we're not talking about the measurement, just only the simulation ratio. Even the user equipment, we still need to simulation. I will explain, explain it with you um, because there will be a uh, certification relation. Um, in the user equipment, not just only the antenna design, maybe we should consider the enclosure and uh, consider the PCB in the user equipment and considering the material to affect our antenna performance. This is because of the our device and our antenna will using the millimeter wave. Millimeter wave will be effective in what will be affect with the small structural change, maybe just WBG, maybe just the uh, roughness from the uh, material. So those things will make uh, many uh, issue in the uh, user equipment device. And to do that, the 
simulation will be the important thing in this design. Okay. The base station will using the simulation tool in the 4G, of course, in the 5G. This whole thing is the same. We still need a CA tool to do simulation. And may, maybe we just not only thinking about the high frequency simulation, we need to thinking about the structural simulation and the thermal simulation in our base stations. It's because of the high power will be uh, in the base station. The high power will making the thermal issue, and uh, we will put our base station on the outdoor. So there will be a structural issue in uh, when we in the outdoor environment. So those things will be uh, the issue in the base station design. The most important thing is. In 5G, we will join a design technique with the beam forming. The beam forming is you have changed your main beam uh, to do some beam stream. And the pendant will be uh, visible in the different beam ID. So in the best station design, we will making some uh, problem with how could we using and make some Bing ID to do the Bing for me? Okay, but it's good news for the ANSYS have good tool to do this uh, Bing for me simulations. So we have a totally solution to do this, and we have some uh, course to do talking about the Bing for me. So just pay attention for our news. And the third way to do simulation is the channel characteristics. And this is one to uh, use in the multi user for Messi LT and the Messi MIMO. So we will recognize our uh, channel, and uh, there will be uh, you have to uh, put in the user equipment and the base station in the truthly uh, environment just like a CD model or just like a building and to do simulation with those model and to get the channel characteristic and we will do in this with the, our tool. Maybe you just thinking the model is very bad, very big and you cannot simulation well. Okay, it's right, but we have some uh, tool to do this the calls, it is called shooting bouncing ray. The shooting bouncing ray will be a uh, difference with uh, HRVC and uh, difference with the FEM measure. A shooting bouncing ray will simulation for thousand lambda size, electrical size. So the city model is okay and uh, the building is okay. So we were including those environment in our simulation. Today, I will show some uh, example to do this, but you may not just see the uh, building and we have some uh, maybe communication tower uh, to uh, for the example to you. And you just only uh, put in uh, your user equipment and the uh, base station to do the TS and R simulation for our device. Okay. Those simulation version is will be a uh, big structure in our presentation today. Okay, to do that, we have uh, introducing our ANSYS product for the major physics. And maybe most of you just thinking about the ANSYS with the electromagnetic, but uh, the ANSYS will still have the balloon solution and structural solution, even the system separate security solution and the design discovery solution. Okay. And in balloon, they just only, not just only in the thermal issue, we will be a safety, com com safety simulation for the balloon and the structural main product will be mechanical and uh, aerostyna. In electronics, 
We have the HRFS, Miss Will, SI Wave, iSpec, and QCD Trader. And in this year, we were joining with the EMS3D. So this is a good platform for the electrode simulation. And the system software will be the SCADE and Matini and NACE analyze. And this both thing will be a system simulation software and to build the cyber security and the to build uh, which one will be uh, ISO 2626. Okay, then the final thing is the DPU, the discovery. The discovery will be do some uh, simply CFD and do some uh, uh, model physics, and you will reduce your model and fix your model in the space client for the discovery. The space client will be uh, linked with the HFS, such as HFS and QCD, those are 3D tools to, uh, to, re to uh, fix our model to, for simulations. So those is the main major physics simulation for our NSYNC product. But more important thing is the electronic solution for the NSYNC. So we will show some electronics product for the ANSYS. In the real world, is the you must to have of, of the ANSYS product in the 5G applications. First is the ANSYS HFSS. This is the full wave 3D electronics magnetic simulation tool. And it means you can put in any 3D structure in HFS to do the 3D simulation for the electronic magnetic field. And the second will be uh, NCS RF and SI circuit options. Those options will be a uh, schematic domain and you will put in your layout and uh, from, from end from the simulator company complex RF and uh, SI in the design. So this option is more important thing to do the 5G simulations. And the student bouncing rate and EMIT will help you to uh, visualize your external characteristic and the student bouncing rate will be uh, for the other way to uh, knowing about your device in the, your environment, maybe you can uh, solve the uh, install performance for the antenna by the student function ray. In blue, in blue world, maybe you just uh, this is a better you have in in your 5G design. Uh, the answer is Q3D and SI wave will help you to uh, solve in the package problem and uh, like SI PI problem. And the ice baker will be the safety thermal server in the electronics. And you will uh, get the thermal, thermal solving your thermal, thermal issue in this tool and get the temperature distribution to uh, HFS and even as well or QCD and SI wave to simulation the electronic mechanic with uh, temperature dependence. So, and the space kind as far as I have just said, the, will provide the 3D modeling. So, those gray world is you must to have. Now we are packaging those uh, server to uh, as a one product that calls NCS HFS Premier. They were including the HFS, SI circuit, and the uh, shooting bouncing rate and EMIT. The blue world will be you better to have. So we will pick it, we all will also package it in those products. So the all electronics product will include it in the enterprise. So the if you have a thermal issue and maybe SIPI issue, 
I suggest you to consider about the enterprise product. Okay, those product will be uh, uh, powerful and uh, uh, very useful for the 5G antenna simulation. Um, but there are many products and many tools we need to run. Many people were thinking about, well, maybe I will spend uh, maybe uh, two years to learn all product and to develop our uh, design in the, our design team. No, nope. it's just only because the ANSYS will combine those products in the electronics desktop they call ADT. The ADT were including the all 3D domain and the circuit domain in the same interface. It's best the SLF, the SLF is a two point, it is not, is a 2D uh, software. So we can put in, in the ADT. So you just only learn one tool to inland and you will uh maybe you just take a few time to uh do some simulation with the other two or uh, you can uh, handle in in this simulation mca tool so this is the uh, is the most important um, and difference with the other tools we have uh same interface and you not no need to learn two more a tool of to recognize their uh, design and their very near city CF, you just only to see other boundary condition, difference boundary condition, and the port in excitation. You can do the simulation in the different tools. Okay. So let's go to uh, 5G simulations. In 5G simulations, we always uh, using the HS at the first. The HF is a basic three interface in one desktop. They call the 3D and the 3D layout and the circuit. We can call the, we can solve that is the 3D, 2D, and 1D. So the 3D model is the main interface of HFS and you can put in the, any 3D structure in this interface to do the simulation with the FEM server and we will get the electronic magnetic field in the result and maybe just the S parameter and the antenna gain and the differential pair cost talk we will go through with the 3D model but we oh we will make some uh, uh, layer state up structure in the PCB or the RF module. So to do that, if you in you using the 3D tool to simulation the state up structure, they will take many time to uh, measure with the state up durations. So we will uh, change our uh, domain to uh, 3D layout. The 3D layout will be uh, their state up interface you just only can saw the their information and uh, one layer structure and you will do in the 3D simulation with the layer state up structure. Okay. And the final the final final domain is the circuit. The circuit will be a schematic domain and you can print the ROC to do the simulation. You can copy the 3D layout or the 3D model in this domain, and there will be a interface to uh, do the dynamic link for our simulations. You just only put in the 3D model and uh, put some IRC, maybe some active circuit to uh, do the active antenna is okay. And we have some uh, course to talking about the uh, dynamic link for the HLS and uh, the 3D layout with the schematic interface. Okay, so the in 5G design, we will change the band to the meter wave. 
we need to uh, do simulation with the meter wave, we just need to combine our antenna for the array type because of the meter wave will be uh, not transmission uh, too far. So we need to use in the array structure to transmission the, sig the signal more and more distance. Uh, to do the array simulation, maybe in the big in the big array we'll spend many simulation costs, such as the simulation time and the simulation memory to do the simulation. To do that, we will introduce some model for the array structure to do simulations. The array, array module for the uh, HFS is called the 3D component array. The, this, this measure will be uh, meshing with one element and copy the same structure with the same meshing to the other element. So after the meshing, you just get the total structure and the machine result from for the total structure. But you just only spend one element as machine times. So this is uh, to be uh, extend our array do simulation domain to uh, do the more and more simulations. And just like that, you just only uh, put in the uh, element uh, in the different way and the CD component array will be different with FADDM measures because of the CD component array can include in the different type and structure of the element. So you can just put in the antenna rhythm as the element and you can put in the different polarization array in the same array. So this is a very powerful uh, array synthesis platform in the HFS. And so you can just get the several unit cell like uh, the left way. And you can do in the uh, CD component array domain in the, this interface and you can put in the different element and you can put in the, the, the other structure is based the antenna. So you can do in the uh, totally simulation with these structures. But in the 2021 R1, we were including the new thing in this technique. The new cell will be not including the radiation boundary in the because of we will change our uh, simulation style, so you just finish your array and uh, will be uh, air, air, bu air buffer will be uh, from your design. You can change the air buffer and uh, you will see up the radiation boundary in if it, once you have finished the array structures. So we no need to uh, include in a radiation boundary in our element design. But I think that most of the people you will worry about the accuracy of the, these simulations. Now I will show some tests for the, this measure to simulations. First, we will put in the, our element just like the antenna element and the network element. And this, this the 3D component array will copy the uh, element emission result to with same structures. So we no need to change our structure to do this and they will copy with the same structure just like the figure in the right side. And this is a full array, okay? So we just bring our excitations 
you can do the all simulation and uh, with the structures. Um, this structure will include in the edge effect and the mutual coupling for the array. So don't worry, this is not just a simulation with a reflect. This will include in the total structure to do simulation, but you just reduce your mesh time in the simulations. So if you are worried about accuracy, we will show some of the digital content to you. Good agreement with the true 3 structure and the 3D component array. So both methods will be the uh, same result, but the 3D component array will reduce the 67% uh, in the memory and 37% uh, in the simulation time. So there will be uh, reduce our simulation time and do the simulation more efficiency in our uh, design. So this is uh, many in, in many people will using this uh, module to do the array simulations. And this measure will be considering about the practical uh, structure. The practical structure will be simulation with the frequency selective surface. And uh, the frequency selective surface, so surface is the uh, main application for 5G because the frequency selective will be uh, a shooting structure for our uh, 5G device. And Sure, you can use in the practical structure to do the same simulation with the uh, frequency selective surface. And I think uh, most of you know the array will be in the packaging structure in the 5G. So we not just only finish our antenna in array, we were thinking about the uh, feed the line and uh, the active circuit and the maybe a power amplifier and the phase shifter uh, in our uh, structure. So there will be a layer and the step up structure. Maybe in in a sixteen element, sixty element in the uh, array will be a. Uh, more popular in the uh, usage, and the, there will be a layer structure. So uh, we just only using the 3D layout to do the simulation. And the 3D layout will be uh, combine the layer step and uh, there will be classified to uh, the top view. And the top view will include in the array and uh, the page will be uh, distributed in this this layer, and the stack review will be uh, uh, maybe the BGA transition, and the antenna to PCB will be the important thing. And there are more media and there are more transmission line in the structures, and they will mounting with the shifter and uh, the power amplifier to do the informing. So we just using the 3D component array measure to do the element design, and we have get the, the excitation ID. So we can using the 3D layout to lay out our uh, feed line. Oh, this is a, can be a feeding network. And the feeding network will combine with the face shifter and the, the power amplifier. So, if we mounting in the PCB, we have to uh, make sure our dissertation ID and the, the mounting port name. So, if the name is same. In the 3D layout, they will mount in the structure with the right place. And so it, this is an important thing for the 3D layout. And you can do the bin string 
for the PGA very easily. Uh, to do that, we will be uh, let the array become in a faster array, and you can uh, put in your power divider and uh, put in your phase shifter in the circuit domain. The circuit domain will be a uh, which is attention with the HFS3D structure. So there will be a simple way to uh, design these uh, these three structures, okay? But after that, we will constrain the minimum wave uh, bring in the different design idea for the antenna. Uh, maybe you are when you are thinking about the ERP, the ERP is Equipment isotropic radiative power. Okay, so you may constrain about the power density for the main uh, electromagnetic film in the our device. So if you want to do some certification, you will be uh, explore the power density data to the certification. So in you have to uh, do the beam analysis and uh, you will make sure your uh, beam ID will be correct. And uh, this will be uh, depend on the CDF curve. And to output the, the bar film, uh, film to uh, do the simulations, uh, they will take a few time and you will output your every far field and to do the simulation. But HFS have some tool key to do this. You can output your uh, far field uh, by those two key very easily. And you just only choose your frequency and we can uh, customize uh, with the script by the Python. So, if you want to uh, after the other film with the HFS, maybe you can contact us. We can help you to do the Python code and do some different uh, service with this toolkit. Okay, and the HFS will provide in the five G standard toolkit to do the. A power density simulation, communicate calculation, and uh, input the codebook for the Bing ID, and we'll output the CDF curve automatically. But you were thinking about what just uh, just only output some few few figure you need to using a tool toolkit to do this. No, if you want to us. Uh, Certification with the FCC, you have to output more than 3,000 figures in the certification. So, you may be thinking about if we want to output more than uh, 3,000 figures, how many time do you have to spend? Uh, this will be a uh, worse work in our career. So, uh, we were uh, thinking about some tool to do this automatically and they will help us to do this. So we will write down the toolkit to do this. You just only offer 3,000 figure in the maybe six hour or two hours and to do and we'll finish. And so the 5G wizard will be a main uh, tool in the HFS. That you know, they will automatically to extraction of power density by HFS. And, but they will be not classified with the different ID. So we still have to uh, write some script to do this. They will classify your figure with a different fraud and they will be uh, more useful for this. So if you want you want to do the FCC certifications, the HFS will help you to do this. And you may find out with the FCC, the FCC have some uh, suggestion with the certifications. 
is because of if we want to do the power density figure with the measure measure, they will take maybe half of years to do this. And they will spend a lot of time and uh, this is more expensive uh, choice to do the FCC certification. So you will do the simulation at first. Maybe Qualcomm will be the same way to do this. So if you are a Qualcomm customer, you will get the same HS module in the, your device and you will do the same thing with the FCC certifications and you can find out uh, some reference from FCC. Those FCC certification reference are using the HFS to do this. So this is the 5G IF experience power density simulations and maybe we are looking for the power density in the phase and you will opt your the low loss figure to uh, do the certification. The FCC will check your figure and uh, mapping with the power limit table. So there will be the truthfully situation in, in you design a 5G device um, that is broken by Python. And the simulation result will be a table with the power limit tables. The comparison will be come with the FCC. The FCC will do the certification with this. And if you want to your product to uh, sell in the USA, maybe USA and Europe, you will be get the F FCC permissions. So the FCC certification will be the necessary. Okay. Uh, now we have finished our uh, antenna design and uh, our array design. Maybe we were considering about the usage environment. And in usage environment, we were considering the shooting bouncing rate to do the simulations. In this structure, we not put in the structure with our communication tower. You just copy the near film to the structure. So you just using the data link this is a uh, best and if you use simulation way to do the simulation with environment. So you can get the shooting and bouncing of ray and will solve the uh, different uh, radiation pattern in the communication tower. There will, we all know the communication tower will affect, will affect our array device so and one day you may uh, put in your 5g base station antenna with the 4g base station antenna so we still need to simulation those two band to uh, do some simulation because the, in the 4g high order mode will affect with our 5g antenna so we will uh, do some simulation with those uh, device and uh, so their coupling between the base station antennas. And this is the large electrical size to do the simulation. And there will be not easy to do this simulation. We are taking many simulation costs, maybe the memory, maybe the simulation time. But using the shooting bouncing rate, maybe just a few minutes, you can get get the simulation result, and you, you will see up your antenna with the TS more and RS more to do the simulation. But unfortunately, we cannot do the throughput with the shooting bouncing rate because the there are no data rate were inputted in our device, so you have to do the Throughput with yourself, but the shooting bouncing rate will help you to do the throughput more efficiently because you will tell you to tell you which which place will be the weak place and which place will be the main place to do the uh, throughput.
And when you have a new node, the student functionality will slot in the natural electrical size. So let me classify with the our tool. In the small logical size, electrical size, we were using the FEM and uh, maybe time domain, frequency domain to do the simulation with our device. And the median electrical size, we were using the HSIE to do the maybe dish, maybe the some antenna placement with the our uh, logical large electrical size. And if we want to include in the CG model or building model, or maybe the plan, maybe the ETEC, maybe the boat in the environment, maybe we need to uh, use in the HS new bouncing ray to do the simulation. And we also can combine this old server to do the hybrid simulations. Okay, so the instance will be uh, simulation many electrical sites in a different way and using the right tool to do the simulation, you will get a different result with your simulation and not take a long time. Okay, but I think most of you were thinking about the FEM to do the simulation with the uh, large electrical sites. Good news, in uh, HS 2021 R1, we were including the new measure to do the machine. It's called the mesh fusions. The mesh fusion will be non-limit and uh, they will be classified with our three machine type with the tall mesh, pie mesh, and classical mesh. The, those mesh will be a uh, main measure in uh, HFS. In classical mesh, in pi mesh will be a uh, layer state of structure mesh, and tau mesh will be the complex uh, 3D structure mesh. The other way is called is using the classical mesh. Those mesh measure will be uh, just one in the ovation. Now in the HS 2021 R1, we will can we can choose in which part we using the mesh when using mesh measures. So just uh, feel free to uh, contact us and we will provide in the suggestion with your simulation and uh, do the correct mesh measure for your device. But mesh fusion have some um, condition, maybe you can uh, touch the, the different mesh way for each others. So here's some example for the mesh fusions, uh, like the radiated commission. We can put in the Yaki Uta antenna for the uh, radiated commission. And you can put in your TV. The TV will be a touch panel, and uh, there will be layers there are structures. If we want to do the simulation, and we will always input in the absorber to do the to model with the, the chamber so if you want to do this simulation maybe we just oh wow that's that's ridiculous because the uh, this size is too large and uh, you will spend many time maybe just take three days to do the simulation and the good news is the mesh fusion will help you to finish it and uh, the antenna will be the tau mesh and chamber will be tau mesh same and but the tv will change to the pi mesh for the state of structures so we will do, do, reduce our simulation time in this table the global mesh will be take uh, maybe uh, more than three days to do this simulation but the finish fusion just only 20 hours to do the simulations. So that's a bit different way to do this simulation with the new mesh method. And the mesh fusion will be slot in the company structure for your device. So you can put in the enclosure and put in the, the other structure circuit to do the simulations. Okay. Okay, we have finished the, the RF 
simulations. Now just go through with the PCP simulations. In PCP simulations, we will to consider about uh, their data structure. Just we have talking about the three D data. The three D data will compare with the HFS domain. Actually, in HFS three D, we can solve the uh, the stack up structure in the three D view. But in the three D data, we just only to solve the one layer structures and their information with the uh, interface. And the Citadel will be using the MON server to slot in the strip. Um, maybe you can uh, just use in the calculation to the uh, current distribution to do the EM film simulations. And the in material for the 3D will using the FEM. So the 3D will be efficient, more efficiency in simulation for the HRS in this list of structures. So we can use in this to do some simulation with the pre layout design. And not only the 3D layout, we can always use in the SI web to do this. The SI web is the 2D structure in the, and 2D interface for the simulation. And we can use in SI web with because of the SF is totally MOM measure to do the simulation. That's different way with the CDL, but most two software will slap in the different issues because of there are many uh, PCB structure will be uh, not have a uh, completely ground with the PCB. Maybe the ground is just maybe in the four or three ground in the structure. So the, the SI wave will be uh, not enough accuracy in this type of simulation. So we will uh, use using the three data to do this simulation. So they are not only uh, replace the SI wave, no, the three data will be a convenient to a simulation some uh, structure with the three D structures. Okay. Um, so, using the SIF or 3 d layout, you can simulation the signal integrity very easily. And maybe the clock type and maybe the diagram. Oh, you always can see the HRS we are including the connector to do the simulation. The good news is that SIF we are including the HF region to do the 3D structure simulation. So, you no need to afraid of the VR structures. The VR structure will be automatically to see up with the HS region in the 2021 R2. So our software will still improve to do the simulation with the SI and PI. Talking about the PI is power integrity and reliability for the power. So this is just only using the SIF to do this. The SIF will be a powerful PI analysis tool to do this and you will saw the IR draft to uh, the PI and in in 5G maybe this is the more more important thing in the PCB simulation because the the power will be uh reliability for the 5G because I just if I have to say uh, the 5G will be uh, considering about the reliability. So if you don't have a great power integrity, you will be worse reliability for your device. This is not good news to selling. So we will uh, solve in the power integrity problem in your device and make high reliability to do the uh, device design, okay? And the final way to uh, do the SIPS simulation, we will find out the IFI and EMI, EMC, and ESD analysis. To do that, we will including some uh, 3D device, maybe HFS, SI wave to do the simulations. So not just only uh, depend on the one tool, maybe you can use an HFS with the circuit and doing the HFS with the SI wave 
and those different ways to do simulation will be more efficiency. Uh, so we can uh, combine the different software with the circuit since segmented domain. Uh, they're just only uh, using the HS to slot in the 3D structure like a cable or the uh, connector. And the SI will we'll slot in the stay up layer structure just like the PCB. And the same way to using the HS3 layer will do the same thing in this issue. And we will put in together and the simulation at the same time, we will spend maybe just only 20 minutes or 30 minutes to simulation these complex structures. You may thinking about the, you if you draw the PCB and put in or structure in the PCB, uh, that will take a long time to do the simulation. But we just only want to iteration our experimenter, we can use in this measure to do the experimenter iterations. But to, talking about the cable effect, we are uh, thinking about the, the cable is uh, ideal cable. And we just only describe the crank car structures and uh, assuming the cable is uh, a straight line for the uh, simulations. But this is not right because the cable always uh, have EMI issue in the, when the cable is near the line. So uh, we will uh, change our thinking about the uh, cable modeling in our EM simulations. To do that, we have to uh, introduce our uh, new product for the EMS3D. The EMS3D cable will be uh, do the cable modeling with the KPLO discrete field, discrete file, and to do the simulation. So you just only to describe your cable structure. They will make a, they they will modeling with the 3D structure for the cable, and the cable will be a mid line in the our simulation. And they will call simulation with the HFS. They will get the chosen result with the structure. Okay, so there will be a good news to do the current simulation with cable, uh, not just only assuming the cable is straight line. Okay, so we can input the EMSVD or output the EMSVD in the call simulations. So the HRS will be the source to EMSVD, or EMSVD will be the source to the uh, HRFS and cost simulation with each other. We will get the uh, correct simulation result with our uh, EMC EMI simulations. And this is the EMSVD interface. There will be a space kind interface we send. And so we just only put in the 3D structure in this interface. Maybe in this case is the cell phone with the cable line. And we will put in the PCB in the in the cell phone structures. And there will be type C USB in the connector. So those structure will be uh, one cable link learn each other and we will do the simulation with SI wave and the EMS3D. The PCB will simulation with SI wave and there will be data link the near field in the uh, EMS3D. The EMS3D will use in those EM near near field data to do the simulation with the cable line. Okay. So you can saw the truthfully uh, cable simulation and the with the our device design, you can get the truth link result with maybe the RFI and the EMI EMC for our device. This is very important in the 5G device design because just I have to say the high readability is a requirement for the 5G design. Okay, the final session is the thermal simulation. Maybe we can just in the talking about with the base station antenna. The base station antenna is just with high power input and uh, there are many high power input for the base station antenna to um, 
uh, providing the temperature, um, even the thermal problem for our simulations, you can saw the temperature is very high. And uh, even you, you using the good material for the antenna, and there will be a drop down the performance with the several issues. So the link, the link margin for the antenna investigation will be a bad performance with the thermal issues. As we can see, the the main maybe the main beam will be uh not correct in the communication and uh, the gain will be dropped down with the the thermal issues. So to do the simulation with, we were using the ice pick to do the simulation. This is a simply way to simulation the thermal issues because of those uh loss thermal problem will come from the high power and the, the EM loss. The EM loss will be assuming with the thermal team. But this is not right because the, the, the EM loss will be calculation with the EM2. So we were using the HMS to calculation the EM loss and the EM loss result will input with the aspect and you just only choosing the enable feed, in a, the temperature dependent in the HFS and enable feedback and just copy the same model with the aspect. The interface will the same. So you just only copy your model in the aspect and see up with aspect boundary conditions. Uh, and then you will make a data link with HFS EM those results. So let's the the ice pick will simulation the temperature distribution in this EM loss, and there will be a correct method to do the simulation. But this is one iteration because the HS will make this EM loss in the ideal temperature. So we have to feedback this temperature distribution to the HFS and do the iteration again. In my experience, then just three times, it iteration will be uh, stable and uh, convergence with the result and you can get the right temperature and do the EM simulations. So this is the uh, Call simulation flow with ADT, the interface will the same, and so you can just only copy your model in the aspect. Okay, so in the antenna, maybe we copy in the copy the model in the aspect and do the EM loss simulations. We get the temperature distributions, and uh, the temperature distribution will uh, feedback with the HFS, and we can get the array structures. Maybe in the simple case, uh, we only saw the uh, temperature is 99 degrees. And if we uh, put in the heat sink, we can get the uh, more cold and we will get the right uh, antenna gain performance in this, this result, okay? So this is a different way to uh, do the uh, by G design. So you may solve in uh, some issue in this method. Okay. Okay. We have finished the uh, simulation, but we still have to consider about measurement in the 5G. So the measurement will be comparison with the simulation. I will do some uh, case for you. And first the case is the meter wave case with the security prioritization uh, antenna. As you can saw the actual structure and the measurement structures, both uh, good agreement with the simulation and experiment. This is good news for us because the HRS will be help us to do the right simulation with those structures. And we can use in the simulation skill to uh, Often our device promotes, okay. 
And this is the package type antenna for U dot B. Um, this is our ovation for the uh, sub 6 G using. So uh, in package type, um, we can get the same same result with the HMS and the, the measurement. Okay, so this is good news for us. If this is a uh, packaging type for the antenna, we can get the accuracy result and obtain our device to do the simulations. And this is a fractal a monopole direct resonant antenna. The structure is very complex, and uh, you have using the fractal measure to uh, uh, providing your uh, structures and using the directories resonant technique to do and design your antenna. But we can solve the, in the beginning, the simulation and measurement result where agreement with each other and the S parameter is same. So this is uh, very powerful verification for the measurement and the simulations. The author will get the accuracy result with the those uh, company structures. So you don't worry about the simulation is correct. You can get a well uh, obtained with uh, your device. And let's see is uh, this is a uh, Theater for the design and the IF circuit, but the same result with the just we have, we have said the agreement with the measurement and the simulations. So we no need to worry about, and this is a web guide type uh, theater. So there will be uh, SIW structures. Um, this is most uh, popular in using. The 5G structures because the there will be considering about the web guy. You just make some slot in the in the structure. It will be the one structure will be one antenna element. So if you using the SI SIW structures, you will uh, modeling your uh, array antenna very easily because no need to uh, do the uh, Fitting network and uh, there will high efficiency in the simulation, but there will be high cost choice because the VR will be an uh, important thing in the SIW. So if you uh, have interest in this structure, maybe you can contact me or ask him more information. Okay. Okay, this is a uh, low low pass filter structures and. Maybe we can solve the uh, uh, filter structure in the middle lines, but the middle line will not affect the simulation result. We can get the same uh, situation in the other case, uh, the great agreement in the HRS and the measurement. So uh, we not, not worry about the simulation result. The final case will be the HRS and ice bake. Uh, using the HRS and ice bake, you will get the uh, temperature, truthfully temperature result, and uh, the temperature distribution is same with the simulations. And just by say, we just only do this uh, iteration for three times, we can get the same result with temperature and uh, the performance of antenna. So this is the IG design way to uh, consider more and more. And we will consider about the thermal issue in this structure. So we make some uh, via different with the TS modules. So we can uh, do uh, some uh, uh, result with the uh, same with the heat sink. So uh, this is a good thermal. Uh, case for the simulations. And the final case is the antenna in package. So we can solve the uh, measurement and simulation with same and uh, the structure is very complex, but we now don't afraid it. We will get the same result with this and 
this is uh, PGA structures. So they are using the semiconductor in this structure. So we have to use in the CFD to do the thermal simulation. But it's okay. We will still get the same result with the great agreement for the measurement and the simulations. Okay. So after that, we are considering about the simulation and the measurement. Maybe the simulation will help you uh, measurement the more efficiency is correct. And in your design, you will make some design flow with the simulation and commute and, and uh, measurement uh, payroll in the uh, same ways. Okay. Okay, let's summarize with our presentations. Uh, maybe the workflow in the 5G phase array antenna is uh, available to a system label in multi-phase domain for the NCS. The NCS will simulation will analyze the every label uh, for your uh, every uh, physicals. Uh, maybe HS will optimize the antenna element and uh, the phase array design. And the uh, shooting button will help you to uh, obtain your uh, install antenna performance and uh, the coupling between the different antenna. The SI wave will be a pre layout design and the SIPI analysis for the 5G device. And the EMS3D will be a uh, cable modeling and uh, input as an input for the detailed HRS simulations. And the SPEC will be a multiple with the thermal issues. Those and those two will help you to simulation and doing the design very well. And I think I have finished the presentation today. So thank you for your pay attention. My name is Liu Star Zhang. Have a good day. Thank you.